We have comrades today who can come and sit here like I'm sitting and testify to you how by some miracle they escaped a necklace. Well, uh, uh, if you are uh, labeled a sellout, then a group of uh, people would come and attack you. They will uh, apprehend you and then uh, put a necklace around your neck, pour petrol and, uh, and uh, light a match. There's a lot of uh, cultural violence and the NC has contributed and it continues to contribute. Once you have taught a younger person or a person to deal with problems, uh, with violence, even when the problems are internal, they will use uh, violence. So there is a lot of cultural violence in the townships. Initially, there were uh, debates as to which philosophy is correct for our country, be it the Black Consciousness Movement, I mean the Black Consciousness Philosophy, or the Freedom Charter, or the Pan-African. So that debate was healthy. We could engage. We were caught by surprise somewhere in the 19, early 80s when uh, we believe it was under the direction of the ANC that uh, they became intolerant of uh, the Black Consciousness Movement. They became intolerant of the philosophy and uh, started attacking us. It even went to an extent where houses were burned. It went to an extent where people were uh, executed. It went to an extent where people were uh, necklaced. Our people died in the hands of the people we thought they were co-liberators. In our own analysis, it was just a, 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 a Soviet uh, way of doing things that uh, liquidate and eliminate them so that you can then have political space. Now, that also weakened the organization because a lot of people who were in the leadership of the Black Consciousness Movement and Azapo then said, no, but uh, when we got into politics, we never thought we'd die in the hands of our own brothers. And they sat back. <laughs>